right. Conformity, our want to fit in with society, be accepted by the group, to have support, the support of our fellow man. Everyone in this room, just being in this room, me performing this presentation, I too am conforming. But is this conformity bad? We generally speak of conformity in a negative term, a loss of individuality and such. Famous poets such as James K. Baxter all condemned the common person for blindly accepting society's traditions and cultures set before us. Baxter wishes to criticise our loss of individuality as we try to obtain the ideals in life. He blames our culture of materialism and consumerism and our ethics to follow these ideas. The new iPhone, the latest clothes, the utmost priority of the Western world. In all walks of life, we strive for the perfect life, the car, the house, the job, all of which we are conditioned to be the ultimate goal in life. These objectives keep us distracted as we work like little cogs in the flawless clockwork of society. James K. Baxter describes in his poems, The Cold Hub, the railway clock, the railway clock, the town hall clock, and the varsity clock, genteel, exact as a Presbyterian conscience. It displays the strict demand by the school to conform to time. Exact as a Presbyterian conscience refers to the branch of Christianity that are very traditional and strict in their beliefs. Baxter is suggesting that we conform to the to the rules and customs of the education system at the levels of the Presbyterians practice. He hints that we follow the rules almost like our religion. Baxter is talking about the punctuality, obedience, the punctuality and obedience expected by students at Wellington College. We all here are aware of this. All of you would have experienced the high level of tradition Tradition, punctuality and obedience required by Wellington College's students. We follow the rules and never openly contest them. We simply comply. We as students have almost no say in the rules, customs and traditions. So who sets these rules and why? They are the ideals of the superiors, perfect in the eyes of the older generation. They make us follow in their footsteps. We, put, we follow the traditional style of learning, the pen and paper classroom model. This style of learning does not always suit all students. We cannot be treated as a generic student, but all of our individual needs. Not all of our needs are met by the current education system. Other styles of teaching, possible, possibly more practical styles, would be better suited to some students. In New Zealand, we are seeing an increasing popularity for polytechs, which offer this more practical style approach. But this is only at the tertiary level. Nothing is done for the students at the lower stages of their education. Another place where we as the younger generation can form is in the home. Our parents set rules and restrict our access to life's treasures for what they say is to protect us. As James K. Baxter references in his poem, The Homecoming, where he describes the main character's overprotective mother, still she would wish to carry him folded within her, shut from the wild and many voices of life's combat. This is referring to the main character's mother, who excessively mothers the grown man. This is a message about how our parents wish to shelter us from the difficulties and trials of life's combats. They want to save us the hardship they have suffered and pass on their learnings to us the easy way. Though these intentions are good, a child does not always learn by simple explanation. If a child is told not to look behind a closed door, he is naturally curious to what his parents are trying to hide. This approach used by our parents works almost in reverse psychology. We become 
and do the very things they wanted us to avoid. Plus, some of life's lessons cannot be taught by just being told. We need the experiences and emotions to figure out for ourselves the rights and wrongs and dangers of life. If we had no winter, the spring wouldn't be so sweet. If we didn't sometimes taste adversity, prosperity would not be so welcome. This quote from Laura Monaco. Kids who are sheltered too much also have a wonderful outlook on life. This can be very dangerous for them when their parents or guardians aren't there to shelter them, which is impossible to do forever. This will leave the individual extremely vulnerable to the predators in life who prey on the ignorance of others. One example is loan sharks. They make offers that seem sincere and too good to miss. And the innocent individuals go to these enterprises unaware of the potential danger, potential financial danger they could be in with these dealers. I know I've given a bleak outlook on conformity, the restrictions, the rules, and more importantly, the loss of individuality. We may feel divine by these sad and somewhat depressing ideas. But then there is the flip side. What would our life be like without conformity? Total anarchy, where nothing held any value. No one would work together. No, no progress would be made. But we would be free to do anything, whatever way we wanted to. Total individuality. The simple fact is this would not last. When people are free to do as they please, they usually imitate each other. This observation by Eric Hopper shows that humans are naturally communal beings. Humans always want to follow someone else and not be alone. Whether it is easier to not think for oneself, or we just want to be accepted, we do not know. But it is natural and okay for us to conform. So how may one gain the individuality? It can be found by simply through consciousness. To acknowledge the rules and customs of our society and realising that we are not represented by the system we live under, but that we exist beyond and in spite of the organisation within our world. Thank you. Well done.